Hey, I'm Thomas. I'm a software engineer in the uh, I create editor team. We are now all looking at creating web ID and remote development. And uh, I'm going to walk you through investigating VS Code tunneling. So I started working on this uh, this week to figure out how to connect the server with the with the client, like the server, VS Code server that runs somewhere on your, in your container or on a development server with the client that runs on your local host. And uh, my, I was trying to figure out whether we can somehow get around having the server exposing a port. And one of the avenues that we were looking into was uh, VS Code tunneling. And uh, long story short, it's not exactly what we are looking for. The in VS Code tunneling is responsible for tunneling local ports from your development machine to your desktop where you have your VS Code client. And I'll show you what it means. So we had this um, proposed API that we were looking into it. It's re This proposed API is used by the all the Microsoft's remote extensions for connecting like the remote SSH extension where you can connect through SSH to, to a container. Then there is uh, v w v WSL, I think, for Windows, Linux subsystem, and a few more. And so they use this Resolvers uh, API that not other extensions can't use. And there were some mentions of tunneling, uh, tunnel options. And then here somewhere they defined that on workspace if i just search for works work space here we go open tunnel and so we thought okay this looks like you can open some secure tunnel between the server and the client that might be better than exposing a port and that's not it the tunnels are for forwarding ports from the server to the client so i'll show you this uh i'll show you this diagram um, that I draw. And this is what I'm going to walk you through today. This is how the tunneling works. You have your VS Code server and you connect from your local machine through SSH and you configure the SSH in a way that you expose or um, forward the uh, server port, which is in this case is going to be 8,000, 8, but it's arbitrary and you forward it to your local machine. Now, the VS Code client is gonna connect to this forwarded port, and since then, the whole communication between these two happens by the, uh, with the web sockets that are running on this X, uh, forwarded port. There is no other communication. And the tunneling comes into play when you, for example, have a, in, in our case, we will have just some dummy HTTP server, but if you have your development server or database running on some TCP ports and you would like to have access to them from your local machine, but you are not exposing all the ports publicly uh, from the remote server, well, that's when you can use tunneling. You can set up a tunnel from your extension or from your VS Code client and pretty much what the this part of the VS Code, the server starts like uh, connects to that port and then starts sending all the traffic through the web sockets back to th this end of the tunnel when it pretty much exposes on the local port the this server port. So I'll, I'll share this uh, diagram on the issue and link to the issue in the YouTube video so you can have a look but I'm going to now go back and forth between the, uh, the VS Code and uh, my shell, and I'll show you how this works. So let's start by connecting to the, um, let's start by connecting to the remote server that I started up, but we need to forward the port, which this says that the server port 8000 is going to be forwarded here on, on my development machine on 7070. So I'll do that. And then here I'll go to my array and I'll start start the VS Codium server. We are not using uh, VS Code because um, the proposed API is closed and for VS Code you can't 
really create your own remote development extension. So this is all on VS Codeium, which is a which is an open distribution of the VS Code license. So um, I'll share a link on the issue as well. So I'll start this uh, VS Codeium server that on port 8000, that's the port that I'm uh, forwarding and connection token is gonna be password. I'm gonna like, you don't have to try to connect here. It's not gonna be open anymore, but just for the demo, it's password. So I'll open the server and all right, I've already done that here. So I'm just gonna close it and I'm gonna try again. All right, the server is started. Now, I'm uh, using this VS Code Remote OSS um, extension. It's a, it was a great help for understanding how this whole thing works and I'll link to the extension as well, it's open source. And I just had to tweak it a tiny bit. I created this setting when I said that on my localhost because I'm forwarding the server through SSH. So on my localhost on port 7070 uh, with this password, I'm just running um, a remote VS Code server. That was one change that I've done. And then I created extra command here for uh, creating a tunnel because the extension by the default couldn't create a tunnel. And so I created this hard coded uh, that the server uh, port 3000, it's going to be forwarded to my localhost in 3001. And you'll see that's why that's important in a second. So now we're on the extension that uh, that just opens a normal VS Code window. I need to connect to the server. So connect to a host local. Now it's connected. Uh, you can always check it by seeing that it's home Ubuntu. Even though this is Mac, I'm already accessing the server. So I can open this DMP folder, for example. I'll open it. And then I'll try on the Ubuntu, I'll run here the command, which is Python 3. I can't remember it exactly. It should be hopefully somewhere here. And it isn't. So I'm just going to have to copy it from that picture here. All right. So Python 3. And I need to expose it on port 3000. That's what I was showing here on the picture. That's It's arbitrary just for this demo. It's 3000. So I'll start a server. And now uh, I haven't created tunnel. So if I'll go to port 3001, it's, it's unable to connect. But then I can here say create a tunnel. That's running this code. I even have a breakpoint here. I run that. That creates the tunnel. There is no UI for it. Uh, by default, but the tunnel is created and now I can just refresh here and I see hello That's what's running on the server and I can change here. Hello to Hello VS Code Save it and if I refresh here It's hello VS Code. So it's forwarding through the WebSocket connection. It's forwarding the port from the server to the client Exactly as this uh, diagram is showing so that's what VS Tunneling is about. Till we can create our own remote extension, we don't have to really care about it too much. The Microsoft's remote SSH extension has port forwarding implemented. I assume all the other remote extensions do too. So for our intents and purposes, it's nice that we know how it works, but till the proposed API is made public, we can't really make that much use of it. And I'll just sum it up on this issue and link the issue in the video description. And that's all I wanted to talk about today. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.